I started cooking probably around the age of six. Really? My, yeah. My dad likes to tell this story that I fried my first egg at the age of six. <laughs> and that it was the best egg you'd ever had. You know, it's, by now it's like, you know, this gourmet Michelin egg, you know, that as right. it tells the story. Food has always been a part of my life. My grandparents had a garden. My mother gardened. Hmm. So the kitchen was where things happened. I'm Candace Boyd. I am from Indianapolis, Indiana, and I'm a food creative. Tell me more about in your line of work, like what you do from your past to your present. Um, I love how uh, empowered you are with creativity, mm -hmm. you know, and how much that defines you. So tell me how important creativity is in what you do. Oh my God, creativity is every aspect of my life. I, I can't imagine a time where I didn't have a notebook where I was doodling, where I was yeah. writing, where I was singing, where I was coloring, where I was painting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like think about how creative you are when you're a child. Like, you know, you take a box of crayons and you can just draw the world, right? Right, right. But as you get older, you don't always have those crayons. I cannot imagine a time where I was not doing something with food. Right, right, right. So it's just, it's, it's a part of my makeup. And even now, like with my daughter, my daughter knows how to cook. She awesome. is active in the kitchen with me. I make sure that she knows that, you know, if ever you decide to leave your home, that you yeah. can at least feed yourself. Yeah. Because it's not just feed, about feeding yourself. As you continued on, you know, even after high school, college, and whatnot, have you always had a passion that just continued on for cooking? It's, it's more of a passion for cooking and, but also the education piece too. Okay. Because I'm in my late 30s. I grew up in the era where we had home ec in schools. Right. right. Good point. And so now we have this whole generation of students and people yeah. that never learned to cook in school. And, you know, with, you know, fast cooking and fast food and microwavable meals, that's kind of people's, you know, knowledge base of cooking. I'm like, no, something, there's a disconnect yeah. here. How can we change that? So one of the ways I did that was um, I went to Flanner House. Candace, tell me about, we're at Flanner House, right? Which is kind of where you got your, your start. So tell me more about Flanner House and what, what you do here and what oh, happens here. Oh my gosh, so Flanner House is an amazing community resource is yeah. what I call it. They have gardens, they have programming, they have a school, they have a library, they have a bodega, wow. they have a grocery store. What I would do is I would come and get whatever they were growing in that season and use it in a cooking class. Oh, I love it. Yeah. 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 How did you go from you know doing the cooking classes to, to you know to then also like you have your own you know, I spices? I have a spice so line. Yeah. Tell me about that. So I started my spice line years ago. I, I initially again just started making it for my dad. Okay. Making a low sodium version for him, and he'd been using it. My mom's been using it, and then a local chef here said, "Hey, I'm starting a restaurant. Uh, I know you make spices. Can you come up with something just for me?" Ooh. Absolutely, okay. I can. Well, tell me too, because I think it's kind of a, I won't say it's, it's a trend, but I love seeing it happen more and more. The importance of trying to do more like community gardening, but within within the city, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, Well, I, I think specifically here for Flanner, they're yeah. addressing the need. There is not a grocery store within miles of this area Man. that's in walking distance. Okay. So they can grow what the community needs. So if they need greens, they need salad, they need lettuce, they need tomatoes, they need eggplant, they need potatoes. Yeah. They're growing that here. Yeah. They're selling it at an amazing price at the bodega. So it's killing two birds with one stone, right? Food deserts are becoming a nationwide problem. As smaller, fresh grocery stores are being pushed out of business by dollar stores and big box retailers, Many people have been left with no access to fresh food within walking distance. To give you an idea, in New York City, 72% of people can walk to food in under five minutes. Here in Indianapolis, only 5%, with most needing a car just to access a grocery. Because we are, we're all impacted. When a grocery store leaves, oh, we're yeah. all impacted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So not only is it the people that are currently living, but it's the mom that is gonna get pregnant next year. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's the grandfather that's gonna have to move home with the daughter it's not going to be able to get to the pharmacy. It's all of these things. They all play a role. And it's important that we look at that and say, how can I feel the need? I mean, look at that. Yeah, and look like you said, if if it weren't for what's here, this nobody would nobody, be fresh look anyway. at the, Look at that. I mean, yeah. all of it. Well, it's just like the importance of access. You know what I mean? That's I don't care what, what the art form is, you got to have access to it. You if have you don't, to have access. Right. 
tell me, like, yeah, where, where is it you see yourself going and taking this? So, my podcast, I, I, I love my podcast. It's called Black Girls Eating. I co host it with my really good friend. I call her my sister in food, Terry yeah. Askew, Master Chef. Um, it's, it is truly, a, I love work. Yeah. I love to, to showcase others. And it's not just people who are in food, right? It's right. authors, it's writers, it's teachers, it's community leaders. It's, you know, just people that have a great story that someone may not know. Yeah, what, what do you say to people that just don't realize how, you know, important their, their story is? Oh, absolutely. Um, so, I, there's a quote I always say, I'm like, our testimonies are never just for us. Right. Right? There is somebody that can benefit from one little part of your story. I think it's, it's really important to understand that, especially, you know, as a black woman, what we have in community is each other. Yeah. But if we don't take the moment to pass down recipes, if we don't say, hey, you know what? My granny makes the best peach cobbler. Yeah. If you don't get in the kitchen with granny right, and help right. granny write those recipes down, I mean, you're literally writing your history. Yeah, yeah. Right? You're writing, you're preserving your history.